Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today we're talking about virtual reality. Not virtual legality, in case you're confused there. Those are two wildly different things, of course. We're not actually going to be talking about legal matters as much as we're going to be talking about business matters today. The business matters of two prominent technology companies, one in Sony and their PlayStation brand, the other in Meta, which you might be more familiar with as under its prior name of Facebook and its wildly popular Quest designed VR headsets. Both made interesting announcements today and both made me question the future of virtual reality on the whole. Now, before we get into the specifics there, I do want to set out my biases. I'm a big technological type person. I love video games. I love technology. And I have, since it was initially brought up in this modern iteration, loved virtual reality. I love the initial PlayStation VR. I love the Oculus Quest. I love the VR headsets that I have gotten a chance to personally use, which don't count some of the more higher end sets. I think that in a very real way, virtual reality represents the future. And so when giant corporations have either foot faults or massive errors, depending on how you look at these various things, I tend to get a little irritated. So one of the things that you might see in this episode of virtual legality about virtual reality is that I am not thrilled with what these companies are doing right now. I hold out hope for PlayStation, but what Meta announced today, quite frankly, might put the nail in the coffin of VR in this current iteration entirely. So let's take a look at what happened today. On your screen right now is the PlayStation blog. Earlier this morning, they put forth an article about their PlayStation VR product. You can see here the new handsets. They're not using move controllers anymore. And they start talking about what this thing is designed to do. The road to launch for PlayStation VR is in full swing, and we can't wait for you to try the exciting new games and experiences you'll be able to explore with our next generation virtual reality headset, which if you have a PlayStation 5, good for you. They've been a little difficult to come by, but they've eliminated any ease of use of the old VR headset because of its unwieldy, bulky set of wires and the way that you actually have to plug in a PlayStation 5 if you're using any kind of receiver setup. I digress. A lot of folks that are interested in VR are waiting for this new update. As we continue with our launch efforts today, we'd like to offer a quick peek at some of the user experience features you'll discover on PSVR 2. Let's take a look. Here you see a menu screen. Here you see a black and white image. See-through view. Because we've got forward-mounted cameras now, we're able to turn on a button and let you look forward. With PSVR 2, you can see your surroundings while wearing the headset with our new see-through feature. It comes in handy when you want to easily check where the PSVR 2 sense controllers are in your room without taking the headset off. Fantastic. Thanks to PSVR 2's embedded front cameras, users can press the function button on the headset or use the card in the control center to switch between viewing your surroundings or viewing the content on your PSVR 2. The card in the control center also gives quick access to other PSVR 2 settings, such as adjusting your play area. The see-through view is just for viewing only, so there's no recording option. Don't try to get any sneaky recordings in there, PlayStation VR 2 users. You can also broadcast yourself while playing. Look at this. I'm sure a lot of folks are going to use that feature. Maybe they will. I'm not actually watching VR people online. Certainly every time I've ever seen anybody use VR, they look like an idiot. That is part of the fun, though. So maybe there will be a burgeoning Twitch empire of people looking like an idiot with the PlayStation VR 2. More power to them. You can also broadcast yourself while playing and control your customized play area. Look at all this AI doing things, putting Tron grids on your sofa and whatnot. It allows you to set a borderline for the use of the PlayStation VR 2 so that you can be sure you know where that couch cushion is, where that really tiny end table in this example apartment is, etc. And if that looks familiar to you, well, it should because both see-through mode and the guardian boundary system exist in the Facebook slash Meta Quest and Quest 2 line. So not a lot new here from PlayStation VR. They're essentially copying the Meta Quest features. They're also copying or adding, depending on your perspective on this particular instance of technology, a cinematic mode allows you to sit back, watch movies in a fake cinema setting in your VR headset. Very cool. I enjoy it on the Quest. But when you get done with this article, what you basically find yourself looking at is a Quest. You've got an Oculus Quest here, a Meta Quest, a Facebook Quest, whatever you feel like calling the darn thing at this point in time, only with one major difference. And that is, of course, 
this right here, the wire, the tether. A tether and wire, you're gonna feel every time you use this VR setup, even if it's not really bothering you, it does pull you ever so slightly in the direction of your console as you would expect a wire to do. And quite frankly, if you have been playing with the Oculus slash MetaQuest for any period of time, you know that the elimination of that tether was really what helped bring the VR dream to life. The Quest, however you might otherwise feel about VR, and you might not like any of its modern iterations, is the magic sauce that a lot of us had been waiting for. You take the helmet off the table, you put it on your head, and you are transported to another place where you're not tethered, you don't have any of that pull in any specific direction, and it's all in one box, and that has been, and I think is, the dream of the future of virtual reality. So when I look at what Sony is doing, and you might've heard me say this before in virtual reality, I view them as going down a kind of blind alley. That yes, this is fine. You're gonna get better graphics than the Quest, undoubtedly. You're gonna get first party games that you won't be able to get on other systems that Sony is making, like their Horizon tie-in game, maybe tie-in games to other of their first party software. That's gonna be super cool, but it is always going to be limited by this tether. It honestly makes the boundary system a little bit superfluous because you don't have that feeling of not being in the same place as you used to be in quite the same way when you do have that wire connecting you to something. And again, that's idiosyncratic. This is me editorializing, but I do wish PlayStation had figured out another solution, either with very fast uh, Wi-Fi interconnectivity with the PlayStation 5 or otherwise. Now, the PlayStation 5 is in and of itself an interesting portion of this particular business tale because unlike with the Quest, you need to have a PlayStation 5 to use a set of PlayStation VR 2 equipment, which means that you have buy-in already of some several hundred dollars, and that brings up the question of what is this thing going to cost? After all, if we go and buy ourselves a MetaQuest 2, the best-selling VR headset available right now, it's only $400 in and of itself, and that's at 256 gigs. You want a 128 gig version, you can get it for as low is $300 all in, you take it out of the box, you put it on your head, you're somewhere else. And that is going to be a major portion of this story with Sony and PlayStation. They aren't telling us what their launch date is yet. They aren't telling us what their price is yet. And one of the things that I said on social media related to all of this was, well, if that is in fact the case, then what we are looking at here is potentially a big, big win for Oculus and Facebook because they have the better product. They have features that aren't available on the next generation system that Sony is putting out because they are wireless and the sky's the limit for them, in my opinion. And I don't usually say a bunch of nice things about meta business decisions. Now, there's a reason for that. There's a reason I don't often say nice things about meta business decisions. And they proved that writ large today, the same day that Sony put out this information on the PlayStation VR 2. Now, what did they say? In a headline in their own blog, MetaQuest 2 pricing changes, okay? Beat Saber included for a limited time. If we were just looking at this in a headlines episode, we'd say, uh-oh, when you start including things for a limited time, I can't imagine those changes are positive. Although I have to say, we're gonna look at a very odd circumstance here. And even though you don't wanna put negative information in your headlines, I do think getting out in front of something and not making it look like you are hiding the ball on what is actually happening is potentially more useful than just avoiding saying potentially negative things. Because at the end of the day, this changes here should say price increases, right? And we're not alien to price increases here in 2022. Certainly if you've been to the grocery store at all recently, you know it's price change palooza here in the United States. And by change there, of course, I mean increase. So. Perhaps Meta, perhaps Facebook could get out in front and actually talk about increases. Instead, they take a different tack. Pricing changes. We've been all in on VR since the early days of PC and mobile, all the way through to today's premium standalone Six Degree of Freedom headsets. And we've invested billions of dollars to help nurture a thriving VR ecosystem. Uh-oh, Meta, Facebook. I can't put this upon you enough. We are not your friends. You are not our friends. We are not your friends. We don't have some kind of parasocial relationship with each other. You sell a product and we purchase that product when we think the value of the product exceeds the value of the money 
in our pockets. We're not all in this together. And you taking that tack to start your corporate messaging should put everybody on red alert. And it surely does for me. So we're already looking at something that says, oh God, help us. Now, we're making a change that will help us continue to invest for the long term and keep driving the VR industry forward with best in class hardware, action packed games, and cutting edge research on the path to truly next gen devices. Uh huh. Starting in August, MetaQuest 2, that thing that's already been out for a long period of time now, will cost $399 and $499. That's 400 and 500 to, to us for the 128 gigabyte and 256 gigabyte versions respectively. And for a limited time, every new headset purchase will include an offer to download the popular VR rhythm game Beat Saber, which you probably own if you're at all interested in the VR ecosystem at no additional cost. Alongside these changes, we are also increasing the prices for MetaQuest 2 accessories and refurbished units. Lest you think anyone should escape our gaze. No, no, we've covered refurbished units. We're covering accessories. Everything's getting a price increase. You say, wow, Meta, that's really weird. Is that $100, I spy? Oh, yes. In fact, it is, careful reader. The 256 gigabyte version of the Quest is currently $399. It will now be $499. That is to you and me, a 25% increase. I know inflation's bad, folks. It isn't 25% bad. Now also, you've got a lower price product. That's at a different ratio of pricing. And yet it looks to me, oh yes, you've changed from $300 to $400. That's the same $100 increase, even though that is proportionately now a 33% price increase to your lower priced quest. So now you see Sony's gone out there. They don't have a great sales pitch, in my opinion. And you say, ha, I guess we don't have competition there. So we'll increase our prices today. Meta, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you trying to strangle VR in the crib? Because if that is the goal, then wow, you are wildly succeeding. You don't put the use case. You don't put the excuse case. You don't put any reasoned case in front of us to actually look at this. You just say, we need more money to invest in VR. We don't care what you need money for. We don't care what you need to invest in. We read the paper. We see you're investing in the metaverse. Bully for you. I hope it makes you a lot of money. I hope it makes a lot of people very happy. I have my doubts, but that isn't our problem. I feel like I'm gonna need that on a shirt. What isn't our problem? Where you get your money, what you choose to do with it. and. This, we're all in this together high school musical opening to a corporate message is absolutely predatory. You are trying to get us to all say, oh yeah, I want VR to succeed. I want VR to succeed, but it isn't my job to help you get more profits because suddenly they've been slimmed because it's been a rough couple of years in the economy. VR momentum is undeniable, you say. Well, that might be, but you're doing your darndest to stop its momentum entirely. From gaming and productivity to fitness and beyond, VR has become increasingly popular as it positively impacts the way we work, play, and connect with each other. People have spent over a billion dollars on MetaQuest apps, helping to fuel developers' businesses as they deliver the games and experiences that make VR great. Now, this is a normal paragraph for somebody selling VR products. It isn't a normal paragraph when you're simultaneously engaging in a 25 to 33% price hike on your main product line. Hey, VR is big. It's big and we make a lot of money selling it. By the way, thanks for the extra funds. Is not any kind of messaging that makes any rational sense. What are we doing here? At the same time, the costs to make and ship our products have been on the rise. By adjusting the price of Quest 2, we can continue to grow our investment in groundbreaking research and new product development that pushes the VR industry to new heights. I don't care. I don't care why you need the money. That's your job. That's not mine. And again, you just said you made a bunch of money on apps that presumably you're taking a cut from. I don't think the people that are making Meta Oculus Quest apps are just taking 100% of that particular uh, sale or else you're really doing things wrongly in the technology sphere, which, hey, looking at a message like this, maybe you are. But you tell me that you've got increased costs, and I have to presume that those increased costs aren't equal in accordance with both of your products here. So you're giving me equal upgrades, and that means that you're getting more profits at some point in this, depending on how you calculated what is going on between these two products. I have never, ever, ever seen in my memory 
consumer electronics that have been out for a substantial period of time go through this process. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine you go to purchase a Switch or an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5 and Sony or Xbox or Nintendo has just announced, oh yeah, it's $100 more now. Sorry about that. And hell, maybe this is a presage of the future. Maybe Meta and Facebook are just getting out in front of this and this is what our future holds in an inflationary environment with consumer electronics. But I sincerely doubt it. And why do I doubt it? Because VR and electronics is not first on anybody's discretionary spending list. More on that as we get towards the end of this video. We have, says Meta, an ambitious VR hardware roadmap. We're gonna, we're gonna spend that money on you, don't you worry. Beginning with the launch of our new high-end headset project Cambria later this year, and we plan to ship new generations of MetaQuest after that. Which price point might change at a moment's notice. Get in while the getting's good, I guess. Even with these pricing changes, MetaQuest 2 continues to be the most affordable VR headset with a comparable feature set on the market. Maybe, maybe they've heard something about what PlayStation plans to price their headset at. Maybe they saw the PlayStation blog and said that isn't quote unquote comparable to what we do. For whatever reason, they felt comfortable going out the same day as Sony's announcement and saying, uh, yeah, we're giving you massive price increases. You think Netflix can increase its prices? Oh, we can increase our prices. We're making good business choices. Trust us. Now's the right time for us to double down on our efforts to push the state of the art forward with your money, ideally. But the laws of supply and demand do suggest that fewer people will now buy into VR. And the laws of supply and demand and economics in general suggest this is just a hell of a time to make a decision like this. Why? Here's a headline. Walmart shares slump after retailer cuts profit outlook on inflation concerns. Walmart shares fell after the company cut its profit expectations as inflation forces shoppers to spend more on food and less on electronics and other discretionary categories. Walmart is saying this. This is what happened to its stock for having the temerity to actually suggest that this is happening. And all of the retail sector, everyone talking about consumer electronics, is facing these kinds of headwinds right now. Shoppers are being forced to spend more on necessities such as food and less on items like clothing and electronics. That shift has left more items on store shelves and warehouses, forcing the big box retailer to aggressively mark down items that customers don't want. I need to eat. I need to keep the lights on. I love virtual reality. It is not first on my list to spend my money on. So you go into this environment and say, hey, it costs us a bit more to make these things or to ship them or what have you. We're charging you an extra 25% or another 33%. Eh, I guess we're just going to have to invest those additional dollars, which come from where, into VR. No, I think today was a sea change day for what virtual reality has a chance to be in 2022 and the immediate near term future. And as a fan of virtual reality, unfortunately, I think that sea change went very much in the wrong direction under the purview of places like Sony, PlayStation, and more importantly, places like Facebook and Meta. This has been virtual legality for today. If you enjoy conversations about the business and technology of video game software and more, please consider supporting the channel. We can't do it without viewer and listener support like yours. Check out Utreon if you want to get more of your resources over to the channel or Patreon if you're more familiar with that platform. Otherwise, just subscribing, telling your friends, ringing bells, engaging with comments, doing all the things that YouTube and its robots like. Every little bit helps this channel grow. If you did watch this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.